So quick recap, I recently installed the clean 12 volt system. So this takes in the quote unquote dirty 12 volts, which can vary anywhere between uh, upper 11s to uh, all the way up to even 14 if you're on the charger and essentially converts that into a straight, clean, flat 12 volts. So this is commonly needed for any sort of household devices or other devices that are prone um, to issues when there is any sort of variance in voltage. So for this, I plan on running a couple things such as a home router, um, fans or lights, etc. So with that, I also have a 12 volt to 24 volt buck converter. So this takes in 12 volts and outputs 24 volts up to 10 amps maximum. So with our Torquedo battery, I recently found out that it can take both 12 volts or 24 volts. And at both of these voltages, it will take in about 4.2 amps. So if you do the math, 12 volts times two, 24 volts, charging at 24 volts is gonna be twice as fast. Now, I could purchase a standard AC 110 to 24 volts. So for instance, I could plug it in here. That would probably be a lot easier, but we wouldn't be able to charge the Torquedo off of the solar array. So my eventual goal is to be able to get the Torquedo um, set up in such a way that we are essentially using it for carbon-free transportation. So in short, what we're gonna be doing is wiring up the 24 volt buck converter. And from there, we will also have a standard connection. It's just one of those barrel style plugs to plug into the Torquedo and quote unquote fast charge it with the 24 volts. I have the 24 volt output wired up. You can see the yellow and the black wire there. But like I said, I'm still gonna be waiting on that uh, breaker switch to come in so that I can connect this up to the 12 volt system. So for now, I just gave it some extra length of 16 gauge marine wire and I'll just wait for that part to come in and then I'll have to wait until then. Uh, Sid and I were off today, took a, took a day off. So I went and purchased a more compact toolbox, which you can see everything's much more condensed in there. The reason I got a smaller one is just because uh, before the old one was too long between the speaker and the edge of the seat here and it came out a little bit crooked. So this is now the main toolbox where I'm gonna be accessing pretty much all of my tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have up here in the V-Birth, we have the older one there. And I did get rid of the plastic one, I'll probably just donate it because it's a little bit cumbersome and it's really hard to find things in there because everything just, it's just basically like a bin you throw everything in it. Whereas this one, it looks a little bit unorganized, which it kind of is to tell you the truth. But, um, you can at least kind of see everything all at once rather than the old toolbox where you had to dig through and shuffle through to find the right tool. I also did purchase some uh, vinyl tubing, the reinforced vinyl tubing, to retube up the inlet from the seacock which runs to our HVAC system. So if you all recall, um, there is a kink in the hose uh, right where it bends, so there's a little bit of restriction on the water flow. I was able to get most of the bend out but there still is a little bit of a kink. Uh, we did today clean out the sea strainer for the HVAC system, which uh, was a really, really big surprise to me um, how frequently we have to clean it out now in the summer. In the winter, we did not have to clean it out that frequently, most likely due to less growth and things in the water because it's cooler. But now that it's summer and it's warm, and especially now that the HVAC system is running probably 12 to 16 hours a day, a lot of algae and filtration type sea life likes to grow on the sea strainer. So if you all are getting your boat for the first time um, and you're coming into the summer uh, or you've been on the boat in the winter and you're not used to having to clean the strainer as much, you definitely probably wanna check it at least twice a week, or excuse me, every two weeks, once every two weeks, not twice a week. That'd be a little crazy. Unfortunately, ours does not have one of the clear caps on it. So we cannot just easily look at it. I am gonna purchase a clear sea strainer cap. That way we can look at it and gauge how clogged up it is without having to completely take it off. And the fix for the refrigeration system and freezer has actually worked really well. So we can see now it's been a decent amount of time since we last thawed this out. And you can see now there is some ice buildup on the cold plate 
but not nearly as much as there would be if we hadn't fixed the cold air, which was coming out here, if you'll remember. Um, so you can see that my foam pieces there are still holding up well and still sealing in that cold air so that we're not getting a continuous influx of warm, moist air and then an outflux of cold air resulting in an iced over cold plate. So Sydney and I brainstormed this morning on the best location to bring out the 24 volt line to charge the Torquedo battery. And I wanted it relatively close to the nav station because that's where all the wiring is so that we don't have to run, you know, cabling up through ceiling and all that. So I'm thinking of um, punching a hole through here to allow the cable to come out. Um, unfortunately, there's really no way to allow it to kind of, let's say, uh, retract and get out of the way when, you know, after you pull it out, let's say it's, you know, three feet out, it's kind of just hanging there. So the, the thought was we could coil it up and kind of tuck it in here in this area while we're not using it just to keep kind of the clutter down. Here we have the new 24 volt line. Let's see, I coiled it up nice and neat there. And we have it terminated with just one of those barrel style plugs, which fits the Torquedo. So I just ran the first clean 12 volt line. You can see it kind of bundled up there. It's on the top switch here. My plan is to utilize that clean 12 volts to run our boat router. So if you all are looking for a good router that utilizes minimal 12 volt power, this was pretty much the highest performance router I could find that utilizes only one amp at 12 volts. This is the TP-Link AC1200. I do have uh, left over from when I was in an apartment. I have a uh, TP-Link AC1750, but that actually uses 3.3 amps at 12 volts. So this is more than enough for what we'll be doing on the boat. Um, you can see it's a Moomimo gigabit router, does the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. So my plan is to mount it here um, take down this clock, one, because I don't like the location of it, two, it doesn't work. Um, if I am able to fix it, my plan is to relocate it somewhere over here so that you can see it throughout the boat rather than only be able, being able to see it when you're close to the nav station. So there we have it. You can see that it is powered on. The power light there is flashing. We have the power cable, which right here doesn't look too pretty. I need to get some heat shrink that'll properly fit. This heat shrink tube unfortunately did not go all the way down so it was a little bit too small. I'll probably get some white to match. Um, but the power cable runs down along there. Same uh, route as the speaker wire. And of course it connects into the top switch here on the clean 12 volts, which is powered by the overall 12 volt breaker, which powers the 12 volt buck converter, essentially the voltage stabilizer. So that all runs up here. And you can see now it's booting up and obviously there's nothing plugged into the ethernet cables. So there's not gonna be any sort of incoming internet, but at least for the time being, we have the router mounted and I can use this at least for kind of like an internal network. Eventually we are going to get a, our own dedicated internet connection here at the marina. So this will connect into our home modem but we also want to eventually connect this into our Wi-Fi client, which like I mentioned, would be out on the back of the boat so that when we are anchored, we can pick up Wi-Fi, whether it's you know, the open Xfinity Wi-Fi or potentially some other open Wi-Fi, connect into that through the Wi-Fi client, which would be located out on the top of the boat outside and then feed that into the boat in here so we have a much better signal for when we're in the boat. And the fish. Fish? Where the fish is at? The dead one. That was a dead one. Yeah. We're we'll luffing a little bit, pumpkin. Come off the window a little. That's a big boy. Another beautiful day out in the Chesapeake. Late winds. <clears throat> it's the first actually kind of cool day of August. It's uh, probably what, 
low 80s. Okay. Low 80s. This morning we opened up all the windows. It was so nice out this morning. It's probably mid 70s or so. Nice, cool, fresh air. We've had the air conditioning on for most of the days. I think it's usually up in the upper 80s and 90s. But couldn't ask for better weather. Light wind, not stressful at all. Just get to relax. And just kind of enjoy ourselves. So our neighbors gave us this pretty cool teak table that they didn't have a use for and it was taking up room and it's super compact so it unfolds and kind of acts as like a little side table and it actually fits perfectly right here behind the cockpit when we're at the dock or anchor and you can rest it there and put your drinks on it, put your food on it, whatever and it folds up nice and compact for storage. Uh, I haven't figured out a good place to store it yet because I'd like to keep it out of the sun um, but it was pretty bleached uh, when he gave it to me, so I did a um, couple layers of teak oil, and I did use some spray-on lacquer that I found on the boat previously, but you can see, like, I, I don't know if it was, um, maybe, maybe it had been sitting here for a really long time and all the temperature changes messed up the lacquer or something, degraded it, but it's already, like, has this whitish, chalky color like where the lacquer like kind of rubs off when it when it you know hits something or bounces around so I might have to get some some different uh, finish actually I don't think it was lacquer it was spray on something it's just like rust oleum spray on sealant but it really is this really weird like white filled like milky chalky residue on it so I might get some liquid um, liquid lacquer or something along those lines to try to seal it up better so it doesn't Look like that, it's all beat up already. I got a couple new goodies in today for the boat. We have here on the right, this is a 250 amp bus bar. This is going to be uh, used to replace one of the bus bars, which is actually down under this area, one of the negative bus bars that has a uh, crack in a few places along the plastic. And I'd rather have something that I can secure to the hull of the boat, hence the new bar there. Uh, we also have a smaller bus bar. This is for the negative bus bar that's going to be out uh, underneath the cockpit area. And that bus bar has kind of gotten just a little oxidized and beat up over time. And the same thing, the plastic's really brittle. So I just figured I'd purchase two new bus bars just to be on the safe side when it comes to the um, negative buses. We also have here, this is a 200 amp automotive style relay. And this is going to be used to uh, kind of uh, fix up our starter setup. So right now, and uh, the way that Yanmar uh, used to have their starters wired was that the current actually passes all the way from the battery bank up to the key and then down to the solenoid. And the amount of resistance that the power can incur over that long of a distance plus potential corrosion on the connection, uh, connections what is happening is that uh, essentially the uh, solenoid isn't getting enough power in order for it to properly start the starter. So uh, I definitely went overkill with the 200 amp um, relay, but uh, we'll be using this to rather than pass that power uh, or using the power coming from the keys turn to actually engage the solenoid, we'll actually just be flipping a relay um, with uh, nice, stronger, um, thicker cables coming from the battery. That way we're getting a solid amount of power delivered to the solenoid, which then enables a nice, solid start. This is how most most of the time nowadays, um, it's a, a starter solenoid is going to have a relay with it anyway, but mine is not, it's an old boat. We also have a new panel. I'm actually going to use this for a 24 volt DC panel, which will be uh, utilized oh, over there for our 24 volt system. And we also have some new Cree LEDs. These are going to go in place of the uh, CFL light in here, which is currently about 300 lumens. These are a blinding 700 lumens. 
but I also have a dimming switch on the way. Now these do run on the AC power, so we won't be able to use it while we're underway, but while we're here at the marina, it is a nice little kind of extra uh, amount of light that we can have coming from our trusty little lamp there. And then finally, uh, we also have a new banana hammock. So the original banana hammock that I made over there, uh, it works. It's not the best because you can't fit a lot of stuff in it since it's metal on the sides rather than kind of conforming to the shape of the fruits that you put in it. So uh, I purchased one of these just to try it out, see if it's a little bit better. Um, I think it's a, it's like hundred percent cotton, which is pretty nice, but it apparently stretches out pretty well and can hold, I think they said about six to nine pieces of fruit. Whereas that one was probably like four or five so before it started to kind of get unstable. Here's the before shot of the 300 lumen CFL. And here's the after shot of the 700 lumen LED by Cree. You can see it's a lot, lot brighter as I'm sure you can tell from the darkness, this area over here compared to the previous shot. And it also throws light out a lot further, but I think we're definitely gonna need a dimmer for it because it might be nice to have this light really high when we need it like this if I'm working on a project. But um, right now, even with the sun out, it's a little bit uh, overwhelming and kinda, kinda even hurts to look at even with the glass diffuser in front. I also purchased a subcompact Makita drill. You can see here on the left, this is the one that my dad gave me as a hand-me-down since he was no longer using it nor needed it. And you can see this is the subcompact, which I just purchased and received today, which is a lot more compact. And for the projects that I work on, I don't think I need something this powerful. Now I'm still gonna hold on to this one because it's always good to have a backup and it's a very nice drill in my opinion. But for most of the kind of standard projects around the boat, especially trying to get into small places, I think this is gonna be my main go-to drill, at least for the time being. So I got this for $78, I believe. Um, it was one of the Amazon renewed uh, products. So it's been previously used, slash refurbished, but it still comes with a relatively decent warranty. And to top it all off, completing the Makita family, I have a Makita work light. So this is a work light that is powered off of just the standard 18 volt Makita battery. And it rotates a bunch of different modes. Fold it down, flip it around, so on and so forth to get the picture. Um, this was $50, I think. But I have been using my filming light for a lot of my projects, which I actually have over here. It's this one here since it does have a nice uh, white light mode and does have you know battery built in. The only issue is that I don't want to get that one dinged up because it is was expensive, it was $100. And um, I'd much rather use this, get this banged up, than break a much more expensive fancy light, which I use for a lot of, a lot of different things too. I am planning to get a 12 volt battery charger for these Makita batteries. Right now I just have the wall charger, which pulls quite a bit of power, if I recall. And um, plus you're losing efficiencies if I'm trying to power off of the boat's battery bank while let's say I'm at anchor or something, because I'm going DC, AC back to DC. So I did find a Makita um, battery charger for the 18 volt lithium ions that does run on 12 volts DC, but it's actually like really expensive, which is weird, it's like $110. Whereas the standard AC charging charger is like 30 so you'd think it'd be about the same price but it's not it's like <laughs> four times the price which is really weird all right trying to use my new compact makita drill and get this banana hammock 2.0 mounted up here so i'm just going to drill some um kind of guide holes for the hooks and then we'll go ahead and put the hooks in There we go, and uh, if you can see we have the hooks facing outwards since the tension is going to be pulling inwards like this, that way it doesn't come unhooked if we have a rough day and we're moving around. So let's go ahead and get it set up. I have some test, test bananas and onions here. Put that one on just like that. And then got a banana hammock and we got two onions in there now too as well. So look at that. 
these things aren't going anywhere. Even if we're even if we're under pretty heavy weather, I'd say. It does give us a little bit more extra room. So for example, you know, we have some apples here. So I don't know if we can fit this much stuff in. Let's see. I'd say it's not going to really go anywhere. So I'd say overall, pretty good.